Hi, awesome students. It's Dr. Fultz. The purpose of today's video is to show you how to use Google Docs to format your MLA Works Cited page. Now, what we're not going to do is talk about how to pull each of the, uh, the entries, if you will, from UD Live Search or any other database for that matter, or really even how to format those individual entries with regards to their content. We're only looking at Google Docs and how to format the information that you already have into a works cited page. So before we move on, before I actually show you how to do it, what I want to do is share with you sort of a, a cheat page, if you will, that I made up, which sort of goes step by step of what it is that you have to do here. So you can pause this now if you like, if you remember how to do it, but maybe you forget one of the steps, you can pause it now and then just sort of work it out your own. If you're more interested in seeing it step by step with me, then by all means, let's move forward. So I'm gonna share with you my Google document. It's right here. And what I'll do, I'll make it just a little bit bigger. That way you can see it since you're looking at Zoom. You might be only using your phone. Make it a little bit bigger for you. And if you've noticed what I have here, I have six entries that I pulled from my resources here. Uh, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that the entries are in alphabetical order. In this case, they already are, right? So when we look down here. But one thing I want to draw your attention to are the last two entries. In this case, it's Schmid and then Strauss. The reason why Schmidt, of course, comes before Strauss is because it's SCH as opposed to STR. And so that's a simple alphabetical rule that we're using here. The second thing that I want to mention to you is that sometimes, sometimes the articles that you're pulling don't have a credit for an author and it won't even give an organizational name either. So let's pretend here that this particular um, entry by Katie Russell doesn't have Katie Russell's name on here. All right. So let's just delete her name. So alphabetically speaking, how do we determine where it goes? Well, that's pretty simple. We look at the title of the article. And the title of the article begins with the word does. And so we would use that word does as the uh, determiner, I suppose, with regards to alphabetizing this particular article. So D, so it would go really right before Downey and right after um, Bemichat, all right? But let's pretend for a second here that maybe it was this one over here. I want you to take a look at this particular article name. The article name is the case for quality homework. In this particular case here, you wouldn't use the word the to determine alphabetically where it goes. In fact, you never use an article. An article in this case here, grammatically speaking, are the words the, a, or an, indefinite or definite article. So you would use the next word. So it would be case. It would still go first because it comes before Downey, but you wouldn't be alphabetizing this according to the letter B, all right? So just keep those things in mind here. <coughs> Excuse me. So formatting wise, what is it that we need to do? Well, we need to highlight everything here first and foremost. So why don't we do that? We're gonna highlight everything and you can highlight either by uh, pressing control A at the same time, which is what I just did. Or if you like, you can just take your cursor, you can drag it over there just like this. Or of course, you can just click in front of it, hold down control and shift, and then move with your arrow keys, and then I'll highlight everything. But regardless of how you do it, highlight everything. Then I need you to go to format. So again, highlight everything, then go to format, then go to align indent. So notice how if I scrolled over here accidentally, it's going to open a new menu. So we've got to stay underneath format. So format, slide down to align indent, then stay aligned with that phrase align and indent go over into the new menu that pops out and then scroll down to indent options so move that cursor down there and then click that now you've brought up a new window you want to come down to this one here it's a special indent and then there's a drop down menu we know it's a drop down because there's an arrow here so if we click on that we want to scroll down to or rather we want to move our cursor down to hanging so click on that notice it's going to say 0.5 leave it now click apply, and there you have it. So if you've noticed, so I'm gonna make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it really easy. These are ancient entries. Notice how the second line and every line afterwards, in this case here, the third line, they're indented while the first line is not indented. And that's what we call a hanging indent. And that's what you should be creating for your MLA format. But we're not done yet because we got to clean this up just a little bit here, all right? So how do we clean it up? Well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to eliminate the spacing between each of the entries. So just hit delete and it's going to look weird at first and, and that's okay because it really looks crowded. 
And then what we need to do is we need to add a heading. In this case here, we're going to call it We're Excited. Notice I didn't do anything special with it. I'm not making the form, the font really big. I'm not changing the font. I'm not making a bold, but it's the same type of font as all the other text on here. But the way the font looks, the way the page looks right now still doesn't look right. So we have to do one more step to sort of make it look right and to fit according to the regulations or standards, if you will, of MLA, which is Modern Language Association. So once again, we want to highlight everything. Then if you notice up here, you have additional menus, right? So we want to click on Arial and Arial is a type of font. We don't want that. Now, if your teacher in another class tells you they want Arial or some other font, that's perfectly fine. But the standard that you really should be using is, is Times New Roman. So we click on Times New Roman and now it changes. We're not quite done yet. We need to change the font size. So click on font size, it's the numbers. Scroll down to 12, and that is, again, the standard font size. Now, your teacher might tell you something else. You listen to your teacher. But this is the standard that we're dealing with, the 12. But wait, there's more. We still have to make this double space because that's the last standard that the MLA format calls for. So in my particular screen, you can see the double arrows that are going up and down. In fact, if you leave your cursor on there, on the icon, it says line spacing. Yours might not have that up. If it doesn't, you want to look for the three little dots, which is called really an ellipse, which tells you that there's more if you click on them. And what should happen is once you click on them, you should see other icons, which will include the line spacing icon. So once you find the line spacing icon, click on it. And you'll notice that 1.15 is already clicked. It's already checked. It's wrong. You want to go to double, click on double. Oh, I didn't highlight everything. See the mistake that I made. So let's go back. So when I highlight everything, now let's go back to line spacing, go to double, and there you have it. We're almost done. And look how nice and clean that looks. We're almost done. But we got to do one last thing with works cited. So what we need to do is we need to highlight works cited. We need to center that on our entire paper. So once again, you want to go up to these menus. Notice if I just leave the cursor sitting on there, it says center align. So click on center align, and there you have it. And that's the way it should look, ladies and gentlemen. So let me sort of zoom out so you can see how it fit in the window. Oops, clicked on the wrong thing. Let's zoom out to 75%. There, now you can see it. And if you notice, it's cleanly formatted. There's a hanging indent for each of them. There's no extra spacing. Notice there's no extra spacing. So if I put a space here, that's wrong. Don't put extra spacing. Likewise, you're going to be tempted to do something funky with this work side, you're gonna be tempted to make it maybe 16 or 18 and, and put a bowl. Don't do that because that's wrong. It should be the same format in terms of font and point size as everything else in the text. So keep that in mind here. The only difference is, is that this will be centered and these will be aligned to the left with that being in there. Now, as you know, you should have a header. If this was attached to your essay, then the header would naturally bleed down onto here. If this is an individual document, then you have to recreate your own header. And you would do that by double clicking in here and then putting in whatever the appropriate information is. So as I promised, I'm gonna sort of stop the video here, but I'm gonna share with you first that last PowerPoint, the first PowerPoint slide rather that I shared with you. It sort of tells you step-by-step step of everything that you need to do. Feel free to pause here. And as always, feel free to send me an email or you can talk with me during office hours if you have questions. Bye now.